I'm Allison Singer with the Autism Science Foundation, and I'm here today with Dr. Eric Corshane and Dr. Lisa Eiler of the Autism Center of Excellence at the University of California at San Diego. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for asking us. So you presented a study at IMFAR that is a, could be a potential biomarker for autism. Can you tell us a little bit about the study? Lisa. Sure. Um, we wanted to get a sense of what the brain response to language was at the earliest stages of life between ages one and three in both typically developing individuals as well as individuals with an autism spectrum disorder. We wanted to focus on that period of life because that's when language is really exploding in typical kids and is, is experiencing delays in the autism spectrum disorder kids. And so we used functional magnetic resonance imaging during natural sleep. We had the babies asleep, we put them in the MRI scanner, and then we played to them bedtime stories. And we looked to see, using fMRI, what their brain response was during the, listening, uh, during the period of time when they were listening to bedtime stories. And what we found was a very interesting pattern where the individuals that were typically developing had brain response in both sides of the brain, both the left and the right hemisphere in language regions when they were young. And the older kids also had activity in both sides, but the left side was more active. And that's what we typically see in adults, that a left, a left predominance for language. In the autistic spectrum disorder children, we saw more of a right hemisphere response. It was a right greater than left response to the bedtime stories. And we didn't see the emergence of left hemisphere predominance across the three years that, of ages that we studied. Is this the first time anyone has done MRI, fMRIs on sleeping children? Isn't it usually done on children who are awake? So fMRI is normally performed on people who are awake. But of course, you know, babies or little children that are awake wouldn't stand still in an fMRI scanner and they'd be quite scared. So it's a novel idea to scan during natural sleep. Uh, it's not the first time that it has been done. Uh, the very first time babies were imaged during natural sleep and stimuli were presented to the ears to see how they responded to speech was about eight years ago in the science paper. And in that paper, they found that natural speech produces activation of these temporal regions in the brain in very young babies, normal, typical little babies. But since that time, there's been a lack of understanding of the real power of utilizing this method. And a few years ago, uh, my graduate student, Elizabeth Redkay, and then recently, uh, Dr. Karen Pierce and Dr. Lisa Eiler and I decided that we would take this and apply it to the problem of autism because it's a total mystery as to what is the brain dysfunction that leads to autism in the first place. So much work has been done on adult autistic individuals. In fact, there's been scores and scores of papers on uh, the older autistic uh, uh, brain and how it functions but there have been surprisingly no studies whatsoever on how the brain operates at the very beginning of the disorder, at 12 months of age, or 14 months of age, or 18 months of age. So we reasoned that this method is a viable method if used correctly. We understood that the early red flags of, of autism were a failure to develop language. We understood that uh, the kind of language that seems to be kind of off in autism is social language, language that is filled with um, energy and, uh, and emotion and signals and um, uh, telling you something about the other person's feelings and state. So we thought, well, let's image really young babies who are at risk. Let's find out if uh, we can, f let's use a, a method or a, a stimulus which is really engaging so bedtime stories. And, and I think you, Allison, in fact, are uh, one of the world's premier bedtime story readers because you've spontaneously read this story to me, the story that we used in our experiment. <clears throat> and that story in normal children really activates the brain just as Lisa was describing. And um, so you, you have a very powerful method of showing normal brain activation using a very effective story at a very young age. And as Lisa said, what happens is that when we look at how this activation differs in autism, the very strong, very compelling stimulus of children's nursery story, 
there is no activation on the left hand side. The activation is really strong on the right hand side. So that abnormal pattern is really striking and this is brand new. It's, and I think it begins a whole new field having to do with the use of biological measures as markers of risk for autism at a young age.